So good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight. I really do appreciate it. Um, tonight, grab a notepad because this is, you know, not one of those real flashy subjects. It's one of those subjects that, you know, people's eyes glaze over when you start talking about planning. And I don't blame them. You know, planning is not exactly a fun thing to do, but it's essential um, for your business. And how many here, you know, could just answer yes or no, have been, have really considered their trading as a business? Anybody here? I, I know, I know there's got to be a few. That's great. How many, how many folks here would um, say that they don't have any plan at all? Yes, because of me. <laughs> well, that's great, Stu. Douglas doesn't have a plan. Anybody else have no plan at all? Half of one? Well, hopefully this will help you. And... Uh, maybe give you some ideas on the kind of things that you need to talk about. So, th like I said, there's not many slides here, and some of them don't have much uh, of anything on it. But we're going to get into the discussion here of of planning. Now, you know, no one really likes it. <laughs> um, to me, planning is one of those tedious things that, you know, you just wish you didn't have to do. But I've been in business basically my entire life. And I can tell you that without a doubt, if you, if you want to try and get any financing, if you ever want to do anything in business, they're going to require some kind of a business plan. And trading is really no different because you have to remember you're competing against, you know, the best in the business. You know, the the Harvard graduates, all of those folks, you know, getting paid buku bucks to work for Goldman Sachs and stuff like that. You're actually in competition with them because remember, trading is a zero sum game. So if you don't have a plan, if you're coming to the market without a plan and just kind of winging it, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And so we need to get you up to speed. And it, this doesn't have to be any, you know, any book-like thing. It, it can be on a couple pieces of paper. It can be sketched out fairly easily. But it's a thought process that you need to go through. And it's that thought process that's important to, to treat it like a business. How many, how many here would consider yourself the boss? See, we've all had a boss and all had a boss that we really never liked, right? That's why we want to trade. But what happens is so much of the time, we are not very good bosses to ourselves. You fired yourself long ago. See, um, and, and that's just one of the things that that's really important to kind of talk about. In fact, if I were, if you work for my trading firm and I walked into your office and said, can you show me something? Can you show me what you've been doing? Prove to me why you're still employable here. I know, and I'm not going to ask the question, but I know there's quite a few people in here that would say, I got nothing to show you. Nothing to show you. Because you're not tracking your trades, you're not keeping records, you're not following through. And that's that would be one of the quickest ways you could think of, hey, you're gone, buddy, because I can't prove that you're doing anything. Not only that, you can't find a track record on how to improve yourself if you don't record your trades. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So planning isn't sexy. It's really boring. Um, you know, and it makes you think, and, and you know, the hardest part about this is it makes you face you. When, when we trade, our, our biggest enemy is ourself. And it's our emotion. It's, it's everything that's tied up. When, when we trade our money, it's an emotional thing. 
and we are our own worst enemy. And unless you confront that enemy with a set of rules, a set of guidelines, and do some of that inward thinking that makes you realize that you do have to have a plan, you're always going to be floundering and struggling out there. And so we have to get you on course here with a plan. And this is the perfect time of year to do it because you have the, you know, it's going to be probably crummy trading for the most part for the rest of this year. And that's normal. It's, that's pretty average. That's the way it is. Volumes drop off. Everybody's on vacation, traveling around the country. Volumes just aren't there. And so the market kind of stagnates and is kind of a bummer. Okay. So now is the perfect time to be thinking about this and putting together that plan for next year. So one of the things that <laughs> most people have worked for someone else, they've not owned their own business. And they have this idea that trading is one of those things where there's just no commitments, you can put your feet up. You know, when I first left my job, I thought, you know, this is gonna be awesome. I can, and, and I was doing pretty well, okay? This is going to be awesome because I'm going to be able to watch CNBC all day long. I'm going to be able to do all of this. I'm going to stay right on top of the news. I'm going to do all of these great things. Well, guess what? I mean, I was doing better when I was working full time. When I fill my day or when you fill your day with all of that kind of stuff, it really messes you up. I mean, really messes you up, you know, no commitments, no schedule, no boss, nobody to answer to. And you really slack off. We all have that lazy streak in us, each and every one of us, especially guys. We have this real amazing lazy streak. You set us down in a chair long enough and we're going to get pretty lazy. That's just all there is to it. It's normal. And so we need to have that, that schedule those things that we have to accomplish those tasks that we need to complete every day so that we can be you know in the business world because that's what trading is it's a business so the fact is you know you've got to have schedules you've got to have a plan you've got to have the education i am constantly learning i've been doing this for 27 years and i tell you every single day i learn something new about trading i am constantly learning um, and the fact of the matter is it's just plain old dirty work. Um, that's all it is. It's, it's get in there and grind it out day after day, doing the job that you're supposed to do. And as much as I love my job, it's work. Okay. Just like any other job, it's something I have to show up for. I need to be there early. I need to be prepared. I need to do the things that I, that make me productive throughout the day. How many of you would, would say that you really feel productive or have been productive at the end of the day? And we need to get you to the point where you finish the day packing up your office for the day and you have felt productive like you've gotten something done. Not just sat there and watched a candle wiggle around. Okay, so we're going to have to... Uh, some of you, you know, we're going to have to work on it. Sue's saying, yeah, she does. And that's great. So trading is a business and we need to treat it just as a business, just like a business, any other business. We have to have a plan. We have to have that, that focus that takes us to that path of, of success and in some kind of an idea how we're going to go from one place to the next. So, you know, for example, I used to build houses for a living. Little houses, giant houses, all kinds of things. Well, I'd get a, I'd get a blueprint for a three-story, you know, um, 6,000 square foot house. And it's almost overwhelming the amount of things as the general contractor, as the guy responsible for completing this house, it's almost overwhelming the number of things, the number of details that you have to cover, the things that you have to focus on. 
the people that you have to make contact with, follow up with, schedule, plan, push, all those kind of things. And without a plan, it would be absolutely impossible to get it done. So one of my one of the things that I would do is I would usually um, I I get up I've always been a guy that got up pretty early, early in the morning so I was usually up at four thirty five o'clock in the morning, and I would hit a local restaurant and I would sit down and I'd roll out my plans and I was writing a schedule every single day, and not just for me, a list of accomplishments for every employee, what we needed to try and cover, things we needed to try and do, okay, and. That made me productive. It kept our business moving forward all the time because we stayed on top of all of those details. Well, trading is the same thing. We need to have that plan, that schedule to move us forward. So when, it, when, when you are a sole proprietor business, all the responsibility falls on you. And I know most traders don't think of it that way. They don't think, actually, they kind of think, well, there's just no responsibility. I don't have to worry about too much other than, you know, trading a little bit and, and that kind of thing. But all of that responsibility falls to your shoulders. That means that when you make a mistake as the boss of your company, you need to come down pretty hard on yourself and fix that problem now. You cannot wait for someone else to tell you that wasn't right or that didn't work. You have to be that boss. You have to be that person that says, all right, that's it. Not doing that again. And correct that behavior, problem, habit, whatever it is. You got to do it right now. And figure out how you're going to fix that problem. You know, one of the things that I suffered from for a long time is I would blame, I would blame everybody but myself. You know, the president came out and said something and uh, doggone it, then the market dropped. I'd have made money if it wouldn't have been for the president. Well, you know, if it wouldn't have been for that economic report or that stupid earnings report and that CEO coming out saying he was resigning, I'd have made money. But see, all of those things are your responsibility as the business owner, as the boss. You have to deal with each and every one of those. You cannot pass that on. You cannot blame it on anyone else. So you are totally responsible for every win and every loss. And if you're not the tough boss, the boss that's saying, come on, man, step it up here, be more productive. Find a way to be more efficient. Following through, doing the things that you need to do, learning, educating yourself, doing those things. You know, we had a one of our uh, members that passed away um, was a, a great friend. Um, he went by Goofy Golfa here in the room. Um, he used to say quite often that trading full time requires overtime. You know, you can't just sit down at your desk when the market opens, ding, 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 and think you're ready to trade. And as soon as it closes, be gone and not look at it again for the rest of the day. You've got things to do. You've got education to get. You've got things that need to be taken care of, charts that need to be dealt with, stop losses that need to be adjusted, all those kind of things. You have to be responsible to that. So it's an all-day job. Now, we get the benefit of being the boss. We can schedule a day off. We can, you know, schedule half a day off, do whatever we want to do because we are the boss. But when it comes right down to it, that P&L is totally your responsibility. And you have to take that and internalize that and say, look, I'm going to be a tough boss. I'm going to be that person that's going to push myself harder to improve to grow, to be more efficient. <laughs> exactly, Bill. As the boss, you pick which 14 hours a day you work. Exactly. Exactly. And, and to give you an example, I, I work a lot of hours. 
not that, you know, I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me or anything like that. Um, I enjoy it. All right. Always have. Um, I, I showed up at my desk yesterday. Well, this morning at three o'clock in the morning. I've been here all day. And I can tell you when I'm done tonight, I'm going to crash hard. But I will be back here tomorrow morning, never later than 5 a.m. Because I have a schedule to keep. I have a process that I have to get through every single day. And you may not have to carry the hours that hopefully you're more efficient than I am. Hopefully you're a lot smarter than I am. You don't have all of these things that you have to cover. So it doesn't require you to work so, so many hours, but you have to take the steps to be successful in trading. <laughs> it didn't take, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I bought one of those new standing desks. So I'm actually standing right now and it's, it's awesome. Um, I, um, I have a pretty bad back from all the construction work um, and the <laughs> rodeos and everything I did when I was younger. And um, the standing desk is wonderful. Um, push a button, it, it comes up where I can stand and work. Um, I'm ab absolutely loving this thing. So, no, it didn't take me long to plug it in, but <laughs> it took me a long, little bit of time to put it together, but um, loving this thing. So your business plan is really your roadmap, okay? It's your roadmap to think about your goals, the tools that you use, what style of trader are you going to be, the process that you're going to follow, okay? And the rules. And no one wants to have to live by that kind of a strict guideline. But we need to as a business owner. And so we're going to step forward and, and look at this. Now, your business plan is really nothing more, or your trading plan, interchangeable terms there, are really just a method of, of moving you from point A to point B. How am I going to get from where I am to where I want to be? How, you know, for example, I'm building a house. How am I going to take this set of blueprints and turn this into a house that people can live in? In a specified period of time, how am I going to get that done? Well, you do that with, with um, small tasks, small goals. You can't bite it off all at once. You have to take little pieces at a time and just keep churning it out one step at a time, moving forward, taking that next step all the time. Okay, so your business plan is helping you take those ideas and put them into action, those ideas on how you're going to get there. And what you want to do. And I put this on here, you know, when I ask people when I'm coaching and, and stuff like that, working with people, I ask them, you know, what's your goal? And the most common answer by far is, well, I want to make money. Now, that's not a goal. Everybody wants to make money. You know, you could actually go ahead and say, that's a fantasy. Because if you don't take the steps or follow a process, you're never going to attain that target of trying to make money. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to get from that point A to point B? Okay, so I'm going to start right here. First, we need to decide what kind of a trader we're going to be. And I see a lot of this in the room. Folks trying to do too many things at the same time. Okay. If you, you've heard that old saying, jack of all trades, master of none, right? Well, my recommendation is that you pick something and get good at it. Okay. Now, if you want to be a day trader, I suggest you just go ahead and, and, if that's the lifestyle that you want as a day trader, then be a day trader. I have rarely seen, almost never seen, someone that can successfully day trade 
and also be a swing trader or anything else. Because the day trading mentality, you've got to be then into those really short, quick charts, okay? Intraday charts. And trust me on this because I tried this for a long time. Most day traders lose money for a long time before they ever start, start making money. <laughs> Stalker's, <laughs> Stalker's a fast swing. <laughs> you got to know her. She's got quite a sense of humor. But, but most day traders don't make very good swing traders. Okay. Because they're trying to pinpoint entries. They're trying to nail things down perfectly that you kind of have to do when you're day trading. You've got to do a little anticipation in day trading. You've got to be quick on the trigger, very quick on your decision making. And that's difficult for a lot of people to do. Most day traders lose money. Okay. So if you want to be a day trader, be a day trader. Now, if you want to be a swing trader like a, like myself and Rick and, and those kind of things. And I think most people here kind of fit into that swing trader mentality. It's really not that big of a stretch from swing trade, swing trading to position trader, taking those little bit longer trades. Those can be kind of be accomplished together, but you kind of need to, to decide where you're going to land. And I see so many people that they want to try and be them all. And I can tell you it, that's just too overwhelming. It's, it's really impossible to do that. You know, if you watch, you know, any of the financial news networks or you watch, you know, um, um, any of these big name traders, they specialize in one or two things. You know, Back when my, my granddad was, uh, was a carpenter, he had to do it all. He had to be the roofer, the carpenter, the, the, the guy who installed the carpet, the guy who did the plumbing, the guy who did the wiring, the whole thing. Well, nowadays everything goes so much faster. Everyone's specialized. And honestly, you get better quality work when you're specialized. So you need to pick, pick your place in the market and say, this is what I'm going to do. And then dig in to be the best at that as you can. And I would say, stay with that until you're profitable doing it before you ever think about changing it up. Okay. To add something else, get good at one thing, master one thing. And I can tell you in, in, in all the time I've traded, I have not mastered swing trading. I'm pretty darn good at it, but I've not mastered it. And I don't know that I ever will because the market always changes. Everything always, you know, moves around, shifts around. Okay. And it's, it's a lot more challenging than most people think. Position trader would be, um, they're kind of that mid, that mid person, uh, between the, you know, swing traders probably looking somewhere between two and three days to two and three weeks for a trade. The position trader is looking for that trade that hopefully goes into that four, five, six month type time frame. They want that longer position, a little more calm. Okay. So they take those positions where they can hold longer. Okay. For, so for example, today, right way options took a trade that is, is clear out till March. Okay. We have a plan based around going out that far on this trade. We, we had one last December that we kept, kept all the way through this August. We made a 99% return on it, but that was the plan. Okay, to take that position and hold that position, that's why they call it position trading, because we're, we're holding it for that longer term move. Okay, 
So pick one of these and decide what that's what style fits you the best and then work to be the best at that style. Learn everything you can about that style. Now this is one of my pet peeves and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. But you have to learn to use the tools that you decide to use. If you're going to use TradeStation, you need to learn to use TradeStation. Okay, if you're going to tr use Thinkorswim, you need to learn to use Thinkorswim. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. You need to go through those videos as many times as you have to, to learn to use the tools. Because think about this for a second. If you're going up against the best in the business, do you want to be handicapped by not knowing how to use your tools? I mean, aren't you really setting yourself up for a loss or lots of losses if you're not willing to take the time to learn the tools? And I know it's boring. My gosh, it's boring. But remember, you're the boss. You are solely responsible. If you don't do it, who's going to do it for you? So if you have to stay after work to watch two hours of videos to understand that tool, you better do it. Because you're the boss. And you demand the best from yourself. You cannot come to the market and just be halfway. Winging it. Because the last place you want to be in the heat of the moment, the market's flipping over, you're getting run over, and you don't know what to do with your tools. You don't know how to use them. Take the time to do it. I used to spend every weekend, nights after work until way late, studying, going through videos, learning, finding out how to do it. I used to say, I want to be a power user of this system, meaning I understand it forwards and backwards so that I couldn't make a mistake with it. Now, trust me, I still make mistakes. I made a couple today right in front of everyone because one thing that's hard for me is talking and trading at the same time. But I <laughs> guess I'm only good at one thing. I can't chew gum and walk down the street at the same time either. <laughs> yeah, leap options would be great for a position trader, Jerry. So think about how you're going to move yourself forward as a trader without knowing your tools. Okay, got to be prepared. And that means taking the time, all the time that it takes to learn to use those tools effectively. Okay, let's talk about some goals here. One of the things when, when people start talking about goals, they oftentimes, um, you know, they, they, they put a goal out, <laughs> you know, my Austin Powers here. Um, <laughs> you guys ever see this movie? Dr. Evil. Well, you know, they'll, they'll put an outlandish number out there. Well, I want to make this much money. And, and, and trust me, this is no joke. You're going to get, um, you can have the video anytime you want it or all, this is being recorded. Um, when it, <sighs> trying to think how to say that, um, most people, Are one or two, one or two are one side or the other. There's people that are are so very sensitive to the market that they have an expectation that's very small. But the majority of folks come to the market, particularly option traders, come to the market with the idea because all they see is those all of that junk that gets put out 
about what trading is, you're going to be a billionaire in, in no time at all. So, you know, start with $5,000 and you'll have $18 million in, in 18 months if you follow my plan. That's just crap. And I hope you guys know that. And I've actually had conversations with people and I say, well, okay, what are you starting with? What are we working with here? Well, I've got $5,000. Okay. So what do you want to do with that $5,000? Well, I, I need to make $4,000 a month. Um, seriously? <laughs> they, they have these unrealistic expectations. Um, expectations that not even the best market manager in the world could live up to. And so they're destined to fail because they trade like a wild man. They take crazy risks. Then basically what happens is they end up broke. Because they don't follow any kind of a decent guideline. So when you're thinking about going from that point A to point B, what is success to you? And that's something you have to decide. Your goals need to be realistic. They need to be achievable. So for example, I said, we started with a hundred grand here. Now I put 18% up here. That may not be realistic to you. You may look at that and say, look, if I could get 10%, I would be tickled pink. The next guy says, you know, I'd rather see, I think I can do 20%. Well, let me tell you this. It takes a, a pretty experienced person to make 20% consistently year over year in the market. The best money managers in the world find that almost an impossible task. Okay. So think about that when you're planning, all right? So what I did is if you do 18%, obviously that's 18,000 a year. Divide that by 12, that's 1,500 a month, or, or you need to make about $375 a week. Sounds great, right? Well, hey, 375, that takes a lot of pressure off. I can do that, right? If you do an average of 12 trades a month, it's only 125 bucks a trade. Who couldn't do that, right? The thing is, most people don't even do this much planning. But what are we missing here on this, on this um, thought process? If you're putting out your goal and going through this, just reverse engineer this. If it's 20000 figure it out what it is. What do you need to make? Well, what we're forgetting here is we're not going to win every trade, right? It's not going to happen. So how do we put odds in our favor to win if we know there's going to be losses? Well, let's think about the math here for a second. It's really not that hard, but it's something we have to, uh oh, I've got a slide out of place. Um, we'll talk about this and then we'll move on to the, to the math thing, but Think about how much you're willing to risk. What's your risk tolerance? I ask that question an awful lot to people, um, even live in the trading room, and they really have no idea what their tolerance for risk is. Until you start taking some money away. And then all of a sudden they realize they do have a tolerance for risk. So we have to determine, we have to decide how much puts us into that emotional state. How much risk is going to put you over the edge where I can't do this anymore? I can't take that kind of a trade. And that's the number that you have to come up with. For some folks, it may be 100 bucks. For some folks, it may be 2,000 or more. I don't know. It depends on the size of your account and who you are as a person, the hangups that you have about money. All right. But we have to figure out what our tolerance for risk is and make sure that we can have some balance in that. What we can withstand. So one of the rules, and I'll, I'll give you some basic starter rules of mine, and I don't want you to copy them, but it's a good place to start. One of my rules is I never take a trade 
until I know exactly how much I'm putting at risk and that I've acknowledged it and accepted that, that I'm willing to lose that much money. And I do that every time I take a trade. I acknowledge and accept the risk I'm taking. And, and why do I do that? Because I know I'm an emotional person. No question about it. I've proven that over the years. In fact, if you look at your trading account, I'll bet you've proved that too. Because we panic, right? We see a loss. We didn't plan for that. We didn't expect how much loss this was going to be. We didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. And then bam, we take that hit. So we panic and bail right before the stock turns around and goes back up, right? We've all done that. Been there, done it, got the, got the t-shirt. Or as that Ed says, got the crappy t-shirt. <laughs> because it is, it, it's, it, it probably got a closet full of them, right? We've all done that. So how do we avoid that? We acknowledge and accept the risk that we're going to take on every trade. If you can figure out what that number is for you, acknowledge and accept it every time you take a trade, you will not move into that emotional state that will create that panic, that anxiety over that position. We can sit there and watch it. Don't have to get emotional about it. Okay? So you have to figure out what that number is for you. It's going to be different for everyone. Okay, figure out what that number is and then plan that trade, acknowledge and accept that risk. If you look at that number and it's too big, you cannot take that trade. No questions. I find trades all the time that look great until I plan the risk and I cannot take the trade. I will pass on the trade. I don't care how good it looks. I will not take it if I cannot accept the risk in the trade. Okay? <laughs> James, Jamie's got to park it in the driveway. He's got so many of those crappy t-shirts. <laughs> so you need to find out what your risk is and think about that and, and, um, and really, really dig in. It's a soul searching thing. How much can I take? What really can I give up and not have to worry about it? Not that we want to lose it, but that if it happens, we're okay with it. We can live with it. It's part of the game. It's part of the business. Okay. So we need to find that balance. So I just did an example here of, let's say that you know, you're willing to risk just a hundred dollars on a trade. You don't want to lose any more than a hundred dollars on every trade. Now you got to figure out what your win loss ratio is. And I know some of you might not have a very good win loss ratio right now. We got to work on that with, with some good quality charting and picking things up. And we'll talk about that in just a second, but your win loss ratio is extremely important. And I think that's one of the things that's not talked about enough. So if your win loss, if you win six out of, you know, out of 10 trades, you've got four losses. But you need to make sure that every trade you take has the potential of returning to you at least double what you've risked. How many go to that extent that they plan that trade that far ahead? I see so many people that buy stocks right at resistance. I used to do it myself. They buy it right at resistance because they didn't plan where could this stock stop? Right here. Why would you take a trade that has more risk than the potential reward? Those trades have to be avoided. So you have to think about that win-loss ratio. You have to think about being picky in the trades that you take. And that's going to help reinforce your rules in trading. 
okay? We don't have to trade every day. In fact, we don't have to trade, um, you know, half of the days of the month, but we can still be very successful in trading if we pick really good trades. Okay, so how does this work out now for our goal? We still want to make that $1,500 a month, but look what happens here. If we have 12 winning trades, we make $2,400 because we've done our job here. We've planned where we can make at least two times what we're putting out for risk. Now, not every trade is going to go up there uh, automatically and do that. We know that. But we also know that there's going to be one or two or three or four of those that will go way beyond what you expected them to. Right? Way beyond what you expected them to. My good buddy, Mike Peterson, only been a trader for a year. Started last November. Last month, in November, he made $1,900. Now remember, he started with an account of 20000 He made $1,900 last month. And this guy can't write a, run a scan. He doesn't know how to scan. He doesn't do anything fancy with his trading. It's very, very simple. But what he does do is he stays very focused to his entry and he plans on taking those profits as quickly as he can. You tell him, he, he says, you show me two or 300 bucks and I can't take that profit fast enough. I'm gone. Because he runs a tally every month. He has a notebook. on his. This is how sophisticated his trading is. He has a notebook and he writes down at the top of that notebook what his goal is. And his entire job is to work to achieve that goal. And he keeps moving that stake forward, moving that progress forward. He's moving from that point A to point B, where he wants to go. Because he's very dedicated to taking those trades that will only provide him a good opportunity at a low risk. Okay? <clears throat> How much time does Peterson spend with his trades? Um, you'd have to ask him that, but I do know for a fact that he he's a night owl guy. Um, he takes that CBOE list that we use in Rightway Options. Um, he actually hand wrote it out, laminated the pages. He goes through that list every um, every Sunday. And he picks out 15, 20, 30 stocks. It's a list of the highest volume option stocks from the CBOE. He goes through that list. He, he, he tries to make a, a one sheet list that says, oh, there, here's 15 to 20 stocks I need to focus on this week. That's his scan right there. That's his entire scan. And then he focuses on those charts that look good to him and he waits for the trades. Very simple, and it works. It works really, really well. So in this plan right here, we lose eight trades. Okay, we lose 1800 bucks, but we still make our goal. Okay, it requires a little bit more trading though, doesn't it? So you have to think about that as you resolve your plan. How, which, what really is, what can you do? I know people that, are tr have traded for a long time and just cannot get themselves past trading three or four trades at a time. That's something you're, if you actually have a plan like this, you're going to have to work that out, right? You're going to have to figure out how you can get yourself past that. And the way you do that is a good quality plan. Hey, I'm risking a hundred bucks. I know what my risk is. I've accepted that. That's all good. Take the trade. Let the market do what it's got to do. Essentially, what we're doing here when we're doing something like this is it's kind of like being the we're playing as the house in the casino. We're putting the odds in our favor. When we take a trade, it has the opportunity to make us twice what we're risking. And just the math alone will start to work out.
you'll go through streaks, losing streaks, just like everyone else does. Bad market day clips a whole bunch of your trades and you'll go through losing streaks, but then you'll also have those winning streaks. Okay. But it all comes down to the thinking of that plan. What are you willing to do? How far can you take this? All right. So think about that as you're moving forward. And then what if you find trades that can do three times your risk? Is that going to change the way you trade it? Are you going to think a little bit differently about it? For example, we took a trade in BAC. Okay, it's in the right way options account. Took a trade in BAC. Only had two contracts because we trade that account really, really small. Okay, only two contracts. We took one of the contracts off at about 75% return. We have another contract, and the last time I looked today, it was at 89% return. Because we'd made our goal in the first part of that trade. Now we can see what if we can turn that the remainder of that into a really big win. We just have to manage it to make sure we don't turn the whole trade into a loss by staying on top of it. So we can always find trades that go more than just two times if we look for them hard and we're really picky on the trades that we take. So rules, we, we don't need no stinking rules, right? <laughs> well, wrong. <clears throat> rules are the things that protect us from us. We are our own worst enemy. Just a second, I need a drink. Sorry about that. We are our own worst enemy when it comes to trading because we're emotional beings. Okay. And rules are there to protect us. So you need to think about the, the rules that you're going to have in your plan. And I'm not talking about, you know, your everyday little tweaks and, and trading rules. I'm talking about the big stuff. Okay. The things that you are going to do every day that you're always going to do. And I just put some down here, prepare for the day. Well, that makes sense, right? We're going to prepare to be ready to trade. That means we're going to review the market. We're going to review our charts. Before the market opens, we're going to review the trades that we're in, adjust the stops that need to be adjusted. If the market's looking crummy, we're going to make the decision which ones we may cut loose to take the profits to take the pressure off of the trade. We do that before the market. We prepare. We get ready for the day. A rule that I use all the time, I buy at support. And you'll see my, uh, you know, a set of rules here in just a little bit, but I buy at price support. And the reason I buy at price support is because I get the lower risk entry. So something I always do. Check earnings reports. How many of us have been caught? Everybody in the room here has been caught by an earnings report, right? <clears throat> didn't plan for it, didn't see it, didn't know it. That's really unacceptable. We should never get caught by that. Because if we're prepared, we know when they're coming. And we can plan how we're going to react to that. Whether you hold it or not, you have to have a plan on how you're going, going to react to it. Be prepared. And then things that you're never going to do. You know, one of the things that plagued me forever was I was constantly buying stocks at resistance. And that's just, that's one of my basic rules. I do not buy stocks at resistance. Won't do it. You can't make me do it anymore. I don't care how beautiful it is. You can you could have Warren Buffett right here telling me, I guarantee you, you're going to make money on that. And I won't do it because I broke that rule so many times and it cost me a buckets of money. I won't do it anymore. Can't make me. So it's the things that you're never going to do. You know, one of the things I put on there is buy biotechs. Now, I will honestly tell you that sometimes I will buy a biotech. But it's rare. Because those things will just flat rip your face off. 
And for no reason at all, just all of a sudden something happens and bam. And so I rarely trade biotechs. I don't want to trade high risk stocks. I like my money too much to trade those things. And I don't chase entries. I know it's frustrating sometimes for even some of the members of right way options. What do you think about this? No, I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to chase. I'm going to require that to pull back, prove that it's going to hold support. Then I'll buy it. Until then, I'm not touching it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to plan for it, but I'm not going to trade it until it's time. I never rush to a trade. And you don't have to if you have a good set of rules and plans. You can be absolutely successful being extremely picky in your trading. In fact, you'll do better. So here's some of my basic rules, some of the things that I kind of live by and, and follow. And you can kind of use these. I don't want you to copy these. You need to create your set of rules, the ones that mean something to you. You can use this as a, as a guideline, but if it didn't come from you, if you didn't internalize it, it's not going to work. Okay, so I always trade with the direction of the overall market. You will rarely ever catch me counter trend trading. I don't have the desire to predict the market at all. I want to just move with it. It's the easiest thing in the world. I know I'm lazy. I just want to go where the market's going. If it's going up, I want to go up. If it's going down, I want to go down. I don't want to play two sides against the middle. Just don't want, don't want to do it. I don't want to fight that. So I always go with the direction. I only trade stocks that are moving with the overall direction of the market. So I want a trend. I want a trend in the direction of the market. I buy stocks that are at or near price of partners. And the dot, dot, dot came later. This originally said, I buy stocks at or near price support. But what I found myself doing is predicting when the turn would happen. Anybody ever done that? Try to anticipate the turn to catch the perfect entry and end up ending up just buying the stock just before it kept moving down. So I don't anticipate it. I wait for the buy signal. Always wait for the buy signal. I sell stocks that are at or near resistance. If I'm long a trade, I am going to be selling or taking part of the trade off to, a, to relieve pressure in the position. I do not want to fight resistance. I want to be taking profits there. And if I'm going to short, I'm going to be shorting at or near price resistance, just the opposite of the long. I'm never going to trade without an exit plan. I always know where I'm going to get out before I get in. Okay? And then I go one step further and I know the exact amount of money that I'm putting at risk. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, this just is too cumbersome. It takes too long. How will you ever get into a trade? Trust me, once you start doing this, it takes no time at all. You just got to get into the habit. It's easy to do. It's, it doesn't take long to figure it out. Okay. But I know it seems cumbersome at first, just kind of like the first time you got into a stick shift vehicle, you thought, how in the world can I steer? Can I shift? Can I brake clutch and hit the gas all at the same time? But two weeks after doing it, you're driving down the road, drinking a Coke, eating a sandwich and singing to the, singing to the radio like, you know, you move it over. It becomes second nature. It's, it's not hard. It's not difficult to do this. Okay. And then I acknowledge and accept the risk in the trade that I'm in. Okay. And I make sure the potential reward is greater than the risk. 
meaning that I have the opportunity to make at least twice what I'm risking at a minimum in a trade. I'm not going to take trades that won't provide me with that opportunity. What's the point in doing that, to be honest? I mean, why would we even want to try? Risking 500 bucks, and man, I have the potential to make 200. Woohoo! Really? Why play that game? And then I don't trade if, if just one of those seven basic rules are broken, I don't trade. Simple as that. Rules are that safety net that will keep you safe. And you've got to think about those and you need to internalize those rules. <laughs> exactly right, Bill. Just send you the 300 bucks and save you some time. No joke. That is exactly right. But we do it all the time. I've, I've done it so many times, I hate to admit it. And we've all done it because we didn't plan. We didn't look. We didn't take that second to say, now, wait a minute, what's my potential gain here? And we ended up buying the stock at resistance right before it pulled back. Crummy feeling. I've been there and done that. Now this, this here is kind of where I get tough on everybody. And that is, you got to step up and you got to fess up. I have coached so many people that have huge losses, but have never told their spouse. They've never fessed up to the fact that they've lost money that they're losing money, not, not just losing, maybe even hemorrhaging money, and they're hiding it from their spouse. Now, how can that be healthy for you? It's not healthy for your marriage or your, your, you know, your significant other or whoever. It's not healthy for you because it's just not good for you to hold that stuff in. You're not going to change as a trader if you continue to deny the results. You have to fess up and say, look, I botched this big time, but it's not going to happen again. I'm going to fix this. So you have to step up and be that tough boss and say, look, I've got to account for this. I'm responsible. I am accountable, solely accountable. I need to take responsibility here. I need to fess up and then... I need to follow through and fix it. See, if you look at your accounts, if you're a losing trader, haven't you already proved what doesn't work? It's a tough one, isn't it, Jim? <laughs> See, we have, if, if you've had those losing trades, We've all had that, had that realization at some point in time. We know what doesn't work. How many of you have ever said to yourself, well, I'll take this trade, but I'm probably going to lose money on it. I used to say that to myself all the time. Now, why would you take a trade if you expect to lose money on it? That's just dumb, right? So stop doing it. Just stop doing it. You know what doesn't work. Now you have to fix it. That's your job. Acknowledge it, step up, fess up, and be willing to change. This is the tough part. We all have those things, those habits, those problems that we have to fix. And if we don't step up and do it, no one's going to do it for us and it's not going to get any better. We have to step up. Okay. It's like the 12 step program for traders, right? <laughs> you have to go through that process. You have to say, look, it's on me. 
I'm going to fix it and be responsible to that. I'm telling you guys, if you're not telling, if you're not fessing up to your losses, you will not change because you're, you're lying to yourself. You're denying what's really going on. And until you fix that, until you step up and fess up, you're going to have a real tough time making any major progress in your trading. Keep records. Keep records. Keep records. Keep records. Probably two of the most anal people that I know on this subject are Ed and me. <laughs> um, we're we're data people we want to see results okay so we'll do and we don't care how much paper it requires or how much data or how much time it takes us to ferret out the results but that's what we're going to do but so many traders don't keep records first off let me tell you this if you're trading out of a cash account and you don't keep records i'll pray for you around around tax time because you are going to regret it big time you are going to regret it it is going to be the most painful process you've ever had because you've got to go back and cover every single one of those trades it's business guys business requires that you keep records keep records of your trades that good friend of mine mike peterson his records are a notebook that sets beside his trade on his trading desk. He writes down every single trade. He writes down the trade, the ticker, when he bought it, what he paid for, it, what he sold it for, and, and his profit. Every single time he doesn't miss. Because he knows at the end of the month, he and I are going to have a meeting and I'm going to make him be accountable for that. So he shows it to me. This is what I did. Had this many trades. This many losers, this many winners. Here's my results. And honestly, if you don't keep records, how in the world do you ever expect that you're going to improve? How are you ever going to show that you've made a change if you don't keep records? that you're improving. Even if you're a winning trader, you know, as a winning trader for me, I, I, I average somewhere around seven out of 10 trades that I win. Now I'll dip down into the sixties at times and I'll go up a little high in the eighties sometimes, but I average right around that seven out of 10. Okay. But I still, go back and look at my losing trades and see if I can figure out what I did wrong or if I could do it better. Because I want to be better than that. I don't want to stay here. I want to be better. And I make incremental changes, little tiny adjustments to try and improve. I review more than my winning trades, I review my losing trades. You'll learn more about yourself as a trader by reviewing your losing trades. And then you analyze those results and make adjustments. You adapt. And pretty soon you're going to find out, all you got to learn to do is do more of what works. You don't have to keep repeating the same mistake over and over. Okay? And what's really, really cool is that very, very soon we're going to automate that, a bunch of that stuff for, uh, for you. Ed's been working his heart out on this. And I know he's super frustrated today because we got some technical issues. Um, not with the software, but with other things that's holding him up. But we're going to help you with that with the Trader Vision. Now, Trader Vision, you're going to be able to plan your trades, and it's going to force you through a process to set a goal, to think about that win-loss ratio. So if you don't want to do this by hand, and I'm not telling you, you've, I'm not, this isn't to sell Trader Vision, okay? 
if you want to go through this process of, by hand and do this, do it. Because that's what I did. That's what Ed did. That's what Rick does. We all go through that process, okay? That's how we made it, is we went through that process the hard way. But with, with the Trader Vision software, it's going to help you plan those trades. It's going to force you through a process of thinking about your goals. How are you going to achieve what you want to achieve? And being realistic in those goals. It's going to force you through a process of lining out your trades. It's going to automatically, this is what's awesome, it, it automatically records your trades. Meaning that every trade you put in, it's going to record as a pending trade, an active trade, a closed trade. And it's going to give you results as to what's working for you and what's not. Okay. But here's the thing. Trader vision is only good, as good as those who actually go through and do it. You know, it, 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 it's amazing to me that we have people that will buy software TC2000, you know, anything, whether it's Trader Vision or not, and then don't learn to use it and don't follow through. You want to dive, if you buy TC2000, you need to dive into it. Learn everything you can about it so that you can get the maximum benefit from it. Remember, you're the boss. Nobody's going to do it for you. You're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to grind it out. Take the hours that it takes to do it. We're going to provide, Ed's going to, you know, we're going to provide all kinds of training for you on it. But just know that you're going to have to go through the process. And guess what? If you do one trade and then don't turn the software on for six weeks, you're not going to remember how to do it. Big surprise, right? So if you have any kind of an inclination for this, just keep an eye out. As soon as we can, we're going to release Trader Vision. And awesome, Gwen. That's awesome. Just trying to learn. There you go, Jamie. So just keep pushing it. Um, if, if I had one thing to, to leave you guys with is don't accept mediocrity take control are you where you at the end of this year are you where you where you want to be as a trader or do you want to be better so recommit yourself to your trading your education the work that you have to do the things that you need to focus on write yourself a schedule I know you guys don't believe it or won't believe it, but I have a schedule on my desk every day, the things I have to do. And I don't feel like I've accomplished anything until I complete that list. So step up to that stuff. Don't accept anything less. Be, be what you want to be. Don't be a victim of any of these things or anybody. Okay, dig in and take that gold ring. I know you want it. We all want it. Go get it. Demand that you're going to get it. And that means never saying no, never backing up. Just keep grinding it out. Keep pushing forward. All right, because I'm telling you, it's worth it. The hard work, the effort, all of the, the years of struggle, it's worth it. And I hope I see you guys all on this side of the th of of trading here soon. I know you can be here. If I can be here, anybody can be here. All right, I'm just a big dumb carpenter. But one thing that I have an edge on a lot of people on, I will work harder than anybody around me. You set me a challenge and I am going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm your hero. <laughs> I've never been called that before, Dave. <laughs> 
but thank you. If I can be of help, that's what I want to do. I really want to encourage you guys to, to, to step out there and grab it because it is out there for you. So get after it, step up, fess up, get to work and think about the, you know, the rest of this year, putting together your plan, how you're going to move that marker next year. So you're not sitting here next year at this time feeling like you've wasted another year. Take that step to move it forward. All right. Hey, thanks guys. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to. Um, everyone have a great, great evening. Um, I'm going to stop this recording here, but I will stick around for a few questions if you've got a few questions. Um, so thank you again. Everyone take care. And if um, you got to go, I understand. Have a good evening, and I will talk to you all soon.